You are listening to the World Sports Show on WPPMLP Philadelphia. Soccer-based sports talk covering local, nation, and global soccer. Broadcasting from the Philly Cam Studio in Center City, Philadelphia on 106.5 FM. Sports Show. Charlie Flo here with John Nicricio. It is Monday night, June the 11th. Coming to you live on WPPN LP Philadelphia at 106.5 on your FM and on the internet at phillycam.org slash listen. Got a great show tonight. We have in studio tonight Kira Karlstrom, former basketball player at Drexel, former pro from Romania. Did play some pro football and got a big announcement that she'll be leaving the city of Brotherly Love and going out to L.A. to work with Capitol Records. So I want to thank you for coming in tonight, Kira, and appreciate you taking the time up before you move over to L.A. Wow, I wouldn't have missed this. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, it's, it's when you're out in L.A., it's, it's limited. There is a little bit of media in L.A., so there may be other opportunities on on some radio stations out there and Working in the iconic Capitol Record building is, is like you were telling us earlier, is like a dream come true. I mean, that's probably one of the most recognizable buildings in L.A. Yeah, I mean, when I stepped in there for the first time, I was like, wow, Frank Sinatra, the Beatles, Michael Jackson have recorded here. So um, it's going to be an incredible experience, I think, being in a building like that with so much history. Yeah, so we will break down a lot of your playing career and your outside of playing career, like working with ESPN, working with the Winter Olympics, and working with a – Prethla of athletes, so we'll break that all down on the show tonight. I'm going to get into our trending topics of what's going on in the world of sports this week and what happened last week. This past, or actually this Thursday, excuse me, the World Cup will kick off at 11 a.m. Eastern time in Moscow with Russia hosting Saudi Arabia. That'll be on Fox. Go over Fox over the air antenna, Fox, and also be on Telemundo for Spanish speakers this past Thursday. U.S. Women's National Team hosted China in Utah, and they topped them 1-0. The two nations will meet again tomorrow in Cleveland at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. The game saw the return of A-Rod to the pitch for the first time for the national team after her ACL tear. She has also participated in several match for Utah on the NWSL side. Also in women's soccer, was announced today that USA will face Chile for the first time in their history in a pair of friendlies this summer later in August after the Tournament of Nations. And those games will be played August 31st on a Friday at StubHub Center. And that will be on ESPN2. The other game will be on September the 4th at Avaya Stadium in San Jose, California. These matches will fall, like I said, just after the 2018 Tournament of Nations. And it will be the U.S. Women's National Team's final test before CONCACAF Women's Championship October 4th through 17th. Also, this past weekend, Sinclair scored goal number 173 as Canada fell to Germany 3-2. to Canada had a remarkable crowd of 22,000-plus Sunday, and it was also a remarkable goal because now it puts her 11 goals behind Abby Wong back for the all-time record. The U.S. men drew 1-1 to France in Lyon Saturday. They held a strong lead throughout most of the second half after they got a goal minutes before the halftime whistle. And U.S. Soccer says they're going to try to actually pick a head coach within the next two months. Also news out of U.S. Soccer, Ernie Stewart has left the Philadelphia Union and will now be the GM for the U.S. men's national team. So he had spent a couple years here in Philadelphia trying to rebuild the brand here. Philadelphia Union lost their home game on Friday 2-0 to Toronto FC. And the club also announced today that their U.S. Open Cup game will be this Saturday against Red Bulls at 7 p.m. at Town Energy Stadium. So there we go with all the soccer news that I can muster up for now. There's a lot more other news. Um, there was one individual game last week. It featured Washington Spirit and Sky Blue, and they played to a 0-0 draw. So a lot to talk about. Let's talk about what's on everybody's mind, and that is the World Cup. It kicks off play this Thursday 
11 a.m. So some of you out there maybe want to take a little early lunch break, try this weekend. It's the summertime, so I think you're allowed to get a two-hour lunch break in the summer, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can just tell your boss I'm taking the, the two-hour World Cup lunch break. Um, it might be a little more difficult because you might have a chance to maybe lie to your boss and tell him, well, the USA is playing. And because I'm, I'm 90% sure that a lot of um, the super, super casual sports fans that don't pay attention to soccer don't know that USA is not in the World Cup this year. Yeah, and it's rumor it might have been signed into <laughs> local law that if you get a pass, you could watch it <laughs> without any uh, discrimination from your boss. So, but I, I'm I'm sure that in many other nations around the world, like Russia, for example, that you know, being that they're quite a few hours ahead of us, it won't there won't be any of that watch conflict in Russia, nor Saudi Arabia. Um, Friday also is a great day. It starts at 8 a.m. Saturday with Egypt and Uruguay, and then 11 a.m. Following is Morocco, Iran, and followed up by a Friday, 2 o'clock. I advise all my friends out there, try to get out of work early on Friday. This is probably the biggest game, one of the biggest games in the group stage. It's Portugal versus Spain, 2 o'clock Friday. I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Other than the U.S. not being in it, <laughs> I really can't wait. I just got to mention that every Yeah, time. you know, it's, it's a tough one. But at the end of the day, we, we looked at, USA played four games last year, uh, or not last year, four years ago. And the World Cup itself has about, I think it's 64 matches in total. So we still watched 60 of 64 matches without the USA, and we were fairly entertained. So it's, it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, if you look at the numbers game, I don't think it's going to affect the tenants. So you do have great attendance at some of these local sports bars when the USA played. and But there's so many of the sports bars in Philadelphia that are ethnic-friendly, like you got your Irish bars, and Ireland hasn't been in the World Cup in a hot minute, but yet they still are packed for World Cup, you know, in, in England, you know, they've had a hard time even getting out of the group stage, but, you know, their fans are still going to show up and support, you know. At the end of the day, um, you, you have your powerhouses like Germany, and a couple of the German bars end up having block parties. So 90% of the people that watch the World Cup are still going to watch it this World Cup. They're not suddenly going to go on some type of, oh, I'm not watching the World Cup because my team's not in it. Look at the Super Bowl in America, you know. <laughs> how, how many times do... People say, well, my team's not in it. I'm not watching it. People would watch it. They're going to watch it. And it did make me do a lot of thinking. It's been a long time since, you know, U.S. has not been in the World Cup, and it has, we have to go back to 1986. And I do remember how painful it was watching the World Cups in 82 and 86. Yes, I am old enough to remember watching both of those World Cups, but didn't watch them in English. I had to watch them on Spanish channels at my grandma's house because we didn't have cable. So going over to grandma's house, watching Spanish, you know, it kind of worked out because I was taking Spanish in middle school and stuff and elementary. So kind of helped me with my Spanish. Um, That's a good excuse. Yeah, but I think the first World Cup that really got really good television coverage, to my knowledge, was the 1990 World Cup. It was the first World Cup final I remember watching in English. And I was we, we happened to set up our family vacation kind of around the World Cup, knowing that I'm a big soccer fan. And my grandma lived in a cottage in North Carolina, so we planned our kind of our vacation. The, the, the knockout stage was planned to be down at my grandmother's cottage in North Carolina so we could watch all the games. But that was the first World Cup where I got to watch as many matches that I wanted to. And everybody remembers, you know, it was West Germany that beat Argentina on, you know, kind of a rematch of the 86, you know, because Argentina won in 86, so... Also was the last World Cup that we saw a divided German team. So, that's but it. it just goes back to think that every kid that's playing youth soccer now, and even your current college players, and even some of your pros that play in MLS that are in their twenties, they 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 don't know a World Cup without the U.S. in it. And I don't think that they realized that qualifying is not that easy because from 1954 World Cup was they missed the World Cup from 54. To 1986, they did not qualify. So this is nothing new, but going a streak like that, I mean, you, we've had very big nations miss the World Cup. England missed 94. We've got Italy missing this World Cup, and, I mean. Yeah, it's, you know, past champions that miss it. You know, they're, they were expected to be there. Yeah, I but mean, you're talking just it. a couple World Cups ago. That's it. You know, in 2006 is when Italy won the World Cup in Germany and basically beat Germany on the way to winning the World Cup over France. So it's it's... But you look at a 94 World Cup, France wasn't in it in 94, but then they go win it in 98. That's right. So four years removed, so maybe that's what's going to happen for the USA. Maybe they'll win it when they host it here in 26. Wow, that's a... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I've got some time to work with. That's a bet that I've got eight years, not eight years, what, that's um, 
Yeah, about eight years. Well, if you're going to make money, you got to, you know, invest now. <laughs> invest now. Well, yeah, you know, just like you were saying. With, what know, am I, Charles Schwab now? Charles Schwab. <laughs> Telling people World Cup Investment, Inc. <laughs> if you want the odds, you know, you don't want it when they get in as a hot team. You want to make it when they're not doing so well. So eight years from now, the 12-year kid in the park. I'm Basically, the team that you're going to be on eight years, I got money on you, kid. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah, that, that'll help my reputation as a youth coach in Philadelphia. I'm starting to make bets on little 12-year-old kids making a team. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, take that's that, a, yeah, dude. So Vegas, that, that would be a good one in Vegas. Yeah. Put odds on teams, kids making national teams. I think we're starting something. I'm going to write an article on it. Oh, stop! That's like <laughs> every football coach in America. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's every parent that I deal with. And stuff. Yo, my kid's going to put sure yes, sure yes, buddy. Sure. <laughs> Let me get a striker. <laughs> yeah. right. My kid's going to play play up front. He's going to score goals. Yeah, yeah. USA, watch out. I'm like, yeah, yeah they're yeah. watching. My parents, they're like, um, yeah, honey, just do your best. <laughs> Well, you, you didn't do too bad. You played professional basketball in Romania. You played some tackle football, and you you played at a Division One school at Drexel. So, I mean, yeah, it's but not too bad. <laughs> as a five three kid, you know, I mean, it didn't it didn't look so good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you and Muggsy Bogues, man, you guys are like <laughs> right his the same handles height. were a lot better than mine. <laughs> 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 I was like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> Rebound, and so you did you did set some. Rebound records, if I recall from the last time you were on the show a few months ago, that you shared with us, you hold out, what, an NCAA record for rebounds? I want to say that that was made up by, like, our SID. <laughs> but Most it rebounds is within a five-minute span in the second it's, half of a game. <laughs> I want I think it was a uh, leading rebounder for sub-5-5 five, five guards in the NCAA. They didn't have Division that stat one. until you. <laughs> no, they didn't. They were looking. Because it's like if you're five foot and you're the only five foot player in the NBA and you dunk, well... You're the only NBA player to dunk that is under five foot. Exactly. Or, or, <laughs> they I invented the a tone. <laughs> See, you, you, that's why I love stats. You can invent stats. Like, oh, LeBron James <laughs> only hits game winners on Tuesday after 7 p.m. <laughs> it's like at your height, if you get a block shot, you're entitled to talk a little bit of trash at you least. You are. Yeah, yeah, I mean, think of that. With a, It's funny. Yeah, when you think of all these stats in sports, that's why I love sports. That You, you can literally invent, like you said, you're, you, they invented the stat that they say, okay, has as a guard, five foot three point guard ever gotten this many rebounds? Well, no. we don't know you, you, how much checking you got to go through stats and box scores, and now go look up every height. Yeah. But well, I think nowadays with social media and with the need for content, like you're looking for things all the time to talk Especially about. It's producers and staff, like the the, 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 the guys and girls in the trucks that are putting up the graphics. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're. I was up, one of those one yeah. day. I, I pulled off a, a nerd stat when I broadcast a Sky Blue game. It was um. Gosh, I, I think it was the 2014 that. season I was the broadcaster, but Aubrey Bledsoe got subbed in against the Boston Breakers, and Alyssa Nair was in goal, and Aubrey Bledsoe was in goal, and it was the only time in NWSL history, yeah, they are in their third league, league, that two twins were playing against each other. Not twins from the same mother and father, but they both are twins. Wow. See? There you go. So it That's actually has happened this year. I don't know. I have to look up the schedule. Has Chicago played Washington this year because Chicago's goalie is now Alyssa Nair, and she's a twin, and Aubrey Bledsoe's a twin. Interesting. So, so that that's a stat. The only that's time twins have go, only time twins have gone against each other in the league. So, <laughs> but no, it was, it was a funny story. Beside that, you know, I, I'll share the listeners that I remember Aubrey went went down with with a broken bone last year, and her twin sister came to visit her. And head coach of Orlando saw her twin sisters walking on two feet and thinking, <laughs> that's, "That's a miracle." You, you thought your player had a broken leg, and you see their twin sister walking up on two feet. <laughs> <laughs> you want to jump in goal? <laughs> your legs work <laughs> yeah so let's let's talk a little bit you know about the world cup we're gonna we're gonna ask all three of us who you think is gonna win the whole thing john who do you think is gonna win the whole thing you're gonna have to come back to me in a little bit oh I'm man gonna win you think it over are you gonna go cheat and check the odds? what i always do is i always <laughs> i always talk myself out of it yeah you know it's um interesting. well i'm gonna be bold even though that the u.s tied france 1-1 I, I think france is gonna win it all and it's going out on a limb. It's too easy for me to pick Germany. It's just to me, I have to, it's too easy to pick Germany. I'm going Brazil. Brazil, France. Hmm. You got Can't. Germany. <laughs> 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 that's all that's left. <laughs> I mean, if I have a thousand dollars and I say I got to bet it on one okay. team, it would be tough not to put it on Germany. Yeah, it yeah. would be tough. I mean, just being honest. And, yeah, you know, they're just every facet of the game. They're good. Didn't Germany win in 2010? No, they won Africa? 2014. In South America, 2010. Gosh, I don't know why I'm blanking on 2010. Spain? Was that Spain? Spain. Was it? Spain. 
Spain? Was that Spain? We got to get the uh, get the stat department up and going. Yeah, where's your researchers up yeah. in Yeah, there? thanks. I'm a real good <laughs> host. I don't even know who won the World Cup in 2010 in South Africa. Yeah, it was Spain. I should 2000, know it. I 2006 should know that. was Italy. 2010 was Spain. And because Spain had come off um, two years prior to that, they won the they won the um, um, European Championship, and that was a very big deal. So, yeah, because, yeah, in 2002, it was Brazil. 98 was France, 94 Brazil. Here in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. That was that was painful because USA got knocked out in the gr- in the knockout stage by Brazil. Literally, got knocked out. I think it's when Tab Ramos cracked his skull. When it's one of the Ninja Turtles. That's all I remember. It was one of the Ninja Turtles. Wow. Was it Raphael? Because I mean, they had a bunch of Ninja Turtles Le- on Leonardo. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they did. They had like three Ninja Turtles Donatello, on. Yeah, they Raphael. did. They, they had about three Ninja Turtles on that Brazilian squad. I mean, you look at that line, you're like, dude, game over. Uh, Ronaldo, a couple years later, looked like a ninja turtle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah that, that's funny. When they people had power always, Rangers then. That, that, that's what's funny is is when the young kids today refer to Ronaldo, I know which Ronaldo they're referring to, but when all of us that are over 30 refer to Ronaldo, we're talking about fat Ronaldo. Right. And that's just an – people call him Brazilian Ronaldo. I call him fat Ronaldo. I mean, it just goes to show you that some of these athletes of how – High energy and how fit you got to be for soccer. Maradona and Ronaldo, man, they can they can probably eat a truck now. <laughs> yeah, they're getting a little bit old. Yeah, but I gotta say, you know, after the '94 World Cup, watching the final, I saw a lot of kids in my high school who weren't really soccer fans yeah. come in with the with the Ronaldo haircut. I got yeah. a picture of it here in the studio. Yeah, you, you fans out there got to you got to got to got to. That was probably the history of the world's worst haircut. Let me describe the haircut. You shave ninety percent of your head. And you leave like a little triangle of hair on the top of your head, real short. Pretty much, yeah. Just a very, very front. <laughs> That's yeah. That, that was after that was the re- Brazil '94 Ronaldo or nine. No, that was the 2002 Ronaldo '98 yeah. Ronaldo. Yeah. What do you think I'd look in that? Good God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta have a really good facial structure to not distract. What are you trying to say? Something. No, I'm saying is, is somebody's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You look good in a hat. You are wearing a hat, so yeah, you, you yeah, can pull well, the hat off. You, you know, know? I've been not all ladies can pull off the hat look. Yeah. Go <laughs> the for it. Look. It is the World Cup, you know. I, I know. It's I'm no makeup Monday. It. It's hat day. I know. I, I remember the big thing, too, back in the day was everybody started, like, slicing up their what, the eyebrows and using a little cuts in the eyebrows, and then they started cutting what, cutting out things, what, cutting into your, what, sideburns? I don't even know what they call uh-huh. them. I had a natural one in my eyebrow. Uh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, in basketball, my senior, my senior year, I clashed heads with. Someone on my team, and I got stitches. Oh, teammate during a game? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. How many stitches? Uh, I think it was like two. Or so three. you still came back in and played, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's no, no, no. It wasn't actually during a game. It was. I think we are playing pickup in the summer. Oh, uh, okay. But they're yeah. painful stitches, though. Oh, gosh. Well, it was a weird place. It wouldn't stop bleeding. You know I've got I mean? stitches in my lip from a soccer game. I had yeah. eight stitches in my lower lip. I have stitches here. I, uh, her chin's pointing to her chin, so. Yeah, but every time I do the worm, like on the dance floor, and I hit my chin, it like busts open. Well, so it's, not it's like a problem. I've got a worm story too. <laughs> I actually chipped one of my front teeth doing the worm. <laughs> I'm not gonna say to which artist, but um, um, straight up, do you want to love me or something came on. I don't know why I broke into the worm with my friends, and that's the worst to chip your tooth to some Paul Abdul showing off in front of your friends. Oh, I can do the worm. Exactly, <laughs> the worm is like my best bar move. <laughs> it's my only move. <laughs> The worm. <laughs> That's a thing. It is a thing. It's funny with all these kids doing all these Fortnite dances. I think we need to bring back the old 80s and 90s and early 2000 right? moves. Like kid and play dance? See, yeah, I've, I've yet to see the kids do the kid and play jump to the foot uh-huh. thing. You know? I mean, I haven't seen the Macarena in a long time either. I mean, bring that back. So at the end of the year when we do a contest with our listeners and see who can who listen to our show the most. Yeah, yeah. So now we got some good trivia, so mark this down. I might be a question at the end of the year about the, the worm. <laughs> the Inju- worm. Injuries caused by the worm. <laughs> the worm. <laughs> the injury report comes out for Drexel and basketball. Like here is out. Injury report, the worm. That's awesome. Not Dennis Rodman. Nope, not that worm. <laughs> A worm. <laughs> so two Dennis Rodman references in one night. <laughs> there we go. Let's have everybody out there listening let you know you're listening to World Sports Show on WPPN LP Philadelphia broadcasting on 106.5 FM on the internet at phillycam.org slash listen. He is John DeCrisio. She is Kira Carlstrom. I'm Charlie Flo. Just going through Kira's professional career. We're going to start with that of going to Romania. Um, how does that all go down? Because there is the WNBA draft and you know, not everybody gets picked in the you know American draft, and it comes to a point where okay, our team's looking at me, or do I go 
try myself in Europe? How did it all go down? Um, it was kind of interesting um, because you're right. There's, I definitely was not good enough for the WNBA draft. But um, a teammate of mine was from Romania, and she had sent, I think, game tapes maybe back then to – her, they probably literally were tapes back then. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> maybe it was a DVD, but <laughs> may, I'm not that old. Um, but she sent film, whatever format yeah. it was in, back home. And the owner of a new club um, or the GM of the club was like, we need a point guard and we need a shooting guard. Would your point guard be interested? And I was a senior and I was like on the fence about it. I really wanted to go to grad school and I didn't know if I wanted to play in Europe. And when I was talking to my parents, we all kind of decided like, why wouldn't I want to go? play basketball so travel one, the world one shot you know yeah so i ended up taking um they needed a shooting garden i had a friend from vcu michelle cosell and the two of us you know headed out to romania um in the summer of 07 that's awesome yeah so it was like kind of a fluke thing because i was ready to get my master's i was applying at scad and uh savannah college of art and design and i was ready to move on with my art career and ended up playing basketball for a season so that's, that's an experience i mean what was the you were telling us earlier about, well, what city were you in in Romania? Cluj, Napoca. And it's a very college-friendly town, so you said a lot of people speak English there. So I guess yeah. the transition wasn't as hard mm -mm. trying to learn the language and the culture. Yeah, I mean, well, our staff was older, and so they didn't speak a lot of Eng English, and our head coach was Hungarian. Yeah. Um, but we had a tutor okay. because it was really hard as a point guard. I mean, I knew when people were talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> And then when I started to learn the language, I was like, I learned, ah. what, I learned what American is in Romanian. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we started to learn the language a little bit, at least basketball terms, so we could... Yeah, you have to. As a point guard, you can't yeah. not communicate with your players. Exactly. But not everybody was from R Romania either. Um, I think we had someone from the Czech Republic. We had someone from Hungary. So you almost have to have a common, like you said, basketball, you have to have a common language. You guys can all set and agree on what this means. Yeah. And it, you know, there's also like not just vocal communication, but a lot is body language and being able to read what your teammates are doing. So, I mean, it was a fun experience culturally. It was just so different, like having to learn the language barrier and then being in a different culture who trains completely different. I mean, we had three weeks in the mountains where we didn't touch a basketball. Like we lifted logs and we swam Jeez. and we ran hills. Some and rocky stuff, man. <laughs> lifting logs. We were in a 15 bedroom farmhouse. Okay. And we woke up. That is, that's like Rocky. That Rocky, when he fights the Russian. Yeah. Pretty much I mean, we weren't beating the pig. We were eating it for breakfast, but <laughs> I mean, you go we, catch breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a real thing. Don't joke about that. <laughs> How hungry are you? <laughs> exactly. Well, we actually, one night we got in trouble because we had a curfew. Yeah. As adults, we had a curfew. And we were sitting outside of our rooms getting to know each other because of the first month as a team. And our coaches were so angry. They made us get out of bed, put on our stuff. It's 10 o'clock at night. We had already had three a days. Yeah. And for an hour, we were running around with medicine balls around our head. Jeez, now and it became a four a day. <laughs> It was, it was definitely an experience. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, that's interesting. But it was so, something like I would do over a hundred times. I mean, yeah. It just the people I met and the experiences I had and just being in another culture is just something that, you know, if you have the opportunity to do it, I would recommend it for anyone. Now, how long are their seasons over there? Um, they're almost like a college season. Okay. Uh, when it starts in the late summer, it goes into yeah. It's like September, it's like fall, and then okay. it goes to the beginnings or spring. Um, okay. I didn't make it the full season because I had surgery and I came back early. But, um, yeah, I mean, we were first place in the league when I left. So we were pretty good. Not bad at all. I mean, yeah. you, you got to see a lot of Europe and I'm sure you got to see pretty much all of Romania. Oh, all of Romania. I mean, there are a lot of one-lane roads that when you when there's traffic, there's traffic. Or there's an accident, <laughs> you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, a lot of bus, buses, right? Lot yeah, we didn't actually fly anywhere. Okay. And, um, like I said, there a lot of dirt and a lot of one way roads. So we, I, there was one time we were trying to get over to Transylvania. Um, I can't remember what the distance was, but we sat for seven hours on a bus mm. because we were stopped. There was an accident and, Jeez. you know, no food, no water, like just waiting. And I remember we didn't get to, we had a game the next morning and we didn't get to the hotel till like two. None of us had eaten. So the restaurant brought us out food, but <laughs> It's fried cheese. It's almost like mozzarella sticks. And I'm like, I can't eat this at 2 o'clock in the morning before oh, a game yeah, yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> the so, performance enhancer right there. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is, going back to the stadium or the arena where you played at, mm -hmm. do you remember the food, what the food was like? So it was a lot of meats and potatoes. So I alternated, honestly, between like mashed potatoes and pork chops and chicken. 
There wasn't salad. It was a lot of cabbage. Um, so it was tougher for me coming okay. from Drexel because Drexel has a pretty state of the art like facility, at least in my opinion. Um, I can vouch we were, for it. I went there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we ha- we're very fortunate with the strength coach Mike Rankin, and um, you know, just all the things that we had at our exposure from the training facilities to the staff to the nutrition um, programs that were put together to us and. To go out there was a hard adjustment, I think, just body-wise, because they didn't have the equipment. The food was very, very different. Like Gatorade, everything was important. So Gatorade bottles were super tiny, and they were really expensive back then. Um, It just wasn't a thing there. So Michelle and I's mom were sending stuff to us, you know, propel packs that we could put in our water, just things to, like, keep electrolytes up because we are practicing three times a day. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was definitely a different experience. I was not used to that. And then as the American, you know, we had to be going at 150%, you know, harder than everyone else yeah, just because exactly. that's what was expected. Yeah. Just one quick stat. They have you officially listed at 5'4". Yeah. Well, you know, Dude, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a quarter and shorter. <laughs> <laughs> I get the benefit of the doubt the in the benefit, stat yeah. sheet. <laughs> that American rounded up. Well, that's the funny thing. They talk about in basketball. My dad's always mentioning this, that you always round up on an inch or two. Yeah, you do. You know, you, when you, I've seen stat books listing Alan Iverson's six one, I'm like, dude, he ain't six one. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not six one. I'm five four with my shoes on. <laughs> that's when they measured shoes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I brought the wrong shoes. I wanted to be five six today. <laughs> that, that's why the stat is sub five five guards and rebounding. <laughs> Like, please, I don't want any more. I got to keep, I got to make these records. I know, right? You put me 5'5", five, five, then I'm not eligible <laughs> for this record. I mean, that may be less of a stat. At now, what, what are the, the actual facilities, like the, the gymnasiums you're playing? Because, you know, basketball has become pretty big in Europe, so you're probably playing yeah. in legit gyms. And I think it just depends on what area yeah. that you're in. Um, I think the stadium that we played in was nice. Yeah. Um, but the actual, like, workout room that we were in. Yeah. The lifting equipment at that time was really dated. Yeah. Um, a lot of this stuff hadn't been used in a long time because they didn't lift a lot. A lot yeah. of it was a run and gun type of offense. It just wasn't the powerful, like yeah. here, we were in strength training, you know, like four yeah. days a week. Like, and that's just a thing, preseason, off season, even during the season. And over there, they were like, God forbid I have to lift away because I, I think it's changed now. I think it's very different. Like, people are more conscious of like, we have to lift to get stronger because, you know, ACL, there's a lot of ACL tears yeah. and, in basketball um and obviously your your physical appearance helps your game and i think just you know i'm 11 years out <laughs> so yeah i'm dating myself yeah but 11 <laughs> years ago you know it was a little bit different yeah yeah a lot of it's evolved and we like technology's come in and all these sciences and now did your team have a men's team because we see that a lot in europe where it's all one big yeah club uh we had a men's team and one of the guys um on the men's team went to DePaul. Okay. And we all hung out. And so it was it was really cool just to be like friends with all the other athletes. We had actually, I think, Romanian's national handball team practiced in our gym. Oh, cool. That's a big deal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Especially those was, countries. Those are their And Romania, are I think, back then was really, really good. Yeah. They're like powerhouses in some of those Eastern Bloc states. And countries. I just remember yeah. thinking, I was like, why have I never heard of this sport? Like, I it's wish intense. handball fun, was yeah. in, because I had always begged our coaches for our warm up. Can we play handball? Can we play handball? And one time they actually let us play because I just wanted to see <laughs> if I'd be good at it. It's <laughs> intense. It is. Super intense. It's like, a better version of dodgeball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and who would want to play goalie in that sport? No, Dude, and those no goalies one. are flexible. They're getting lit up, those man. Those guys are absolutely rifling the ball in. And See, I was such a hothead back then. If I played that sport, I would have, like, never been able to play again. I would have been rocking people with <laughs> yeah. the ball. like. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like to play defense, you're basically like a fence. Yeah. And they just jump and. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the way they're jumping in the air and the way. Yeah, yeah. it's just. But it's there insane. is I somebody's book that I read. Um, He's a motivational speaker, but he plays on the men's U.S. handball team. So oh, okay. it is in, I guess it is in the U.S. now. I don't follow it, obviously. but Yeah, there, there are some sports that we have, men's sports and, and women's sports, that I've never seen in my entire life, but we have Olympic teams. Okay, yeah. you know what? I <laughs> think that's that's my next thing. I'm going to play in the Olympics for a handball team. Handball team? Start. Yeah. These, yeah, we'll have to get our stats crew look up what if do you we think? do have I mean, a women's handball see team. They have it out in L.A. we got to get on this. They have Stat it out guy. In Stat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're you're going out to L.A. to f- we're going to find out because because one thing that that shocked me was and it's just field hockey. Men's field hockey is big. I'm like Argentina is huge, and right. I have some soccer players and friends that I play with that told me they played field hockey, and I'm like, oh, that 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 was shocking to me. So it's it's in America you see field hockey is a women's sport, yeah. But then you go see like India and Argentina, men play it and they kill it, and the men, 
you know, they, what do you mean a women's sport? This is a men's sport. It's just a cultural difference. Mm-hmm. And we actually do have a men's field hockey team in the U.S. And I'm like, where? Because I've never seen. I was men- just going to say, I yeah. hope I'm not naive asking this, but do we have? No, men's I, field I, I'm as naive asking you back that I, I don't know that. <laughs> how did you get on the national team? You yeah. know, because who actually plays it? So my, my guess is probably when you get a lot of these Argentines or, or Indian people that are now in America, they probably just form the little private clubs, kind of like cricket. There's a cricket club in, in Philadelphia, right. but you have these like Englishmen and Indians that go to Fairmount Park and play cricket. Yeah. And I've gone there and I've, I've watched it. I have some, you know, friends in the Caribbean that took me and it's just like, holy moly, this is in my city. There's like cricket matches. And it just, you, it, when you look at these big cities that have such melting pots of people, you get enough of them together, they're going to bring their game with them, but right. still have never seen meal, men's field hockey. And I've been up and down the East Coast, a little bit on the West Coast, been in the middle of the country, and got to find out where, where they play, where they train. I mean, I know what the Olympic, whatever training grounds is, what in Colorado that they have, they obviously have a field hockey for the women, but do the men. And I, yeah. I have no idea. That's actually interesting. I yeah. didn't even think that. You know, if there's a men's so team we have any look be? on the a women's I'll, handball I'll, I'm team. Just looking, they've got a tryout coming up in July. Wait for oh, handball. Uh, handball, yeah, women's where, national handball. Where's it at? And looks like near Atlanta. Okay. I mean, Atlanta's guys. cheap flight. You can get to LA to Atlanta. That's a cheap flight. I mean, just, just by the photos, <laughs> it looks pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. <it> looks, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I played football. Uh, okay, we'll have to actually look up the rules. I'm not sure if you're allowed to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> look, I was you the quarterback. I didn't tackle. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, sorry. I can gun the ball out. I can take a hit and get gunned. I mean, my five-step drop and roll out was stellar. <laughs> yeah, being that you're five three, you needed a five-step drop just to see over the offensive I line. Couldn't. Probably. I was like jumping, holding my my front line down. I was like, is there someone out there? I was like, little giants, you know, when they're. Pulling up their head like. But the upside they said about smaller quarterbacks. Sometimes you can hide behind the offensive line. Sometimes you can. Like the linebackers, like where is she? I can't find her. Well, we're an expansion team. This is Boston. You played Boston, right? Yeah, we got beat like seventy to nine or something. In your first game or every game? Uh, the well, (laughs) yeah. I think we won one game. We got annihilated by the Philly Bells. The Bells here were. I remember them. They were a good squad. They were good. A tough, tough squad. Yeah. I want to think they played out in Contra Hawk, and I'm trying to remember where they played. Um. I'm drawing blanks. I knew a couple of the, the women on the on the team because they're, they're, they're friends and yeah. stuff. And um, yeah. So you played for Boston. How how the heck did you get into quarterback? Is just something you could just wing a ball? Is just like actually so, a lot of position you just jump into with not a lot of yeah football experience. Well, ac- so I was in Connecticut. So the team was actually well, it was a New England team, but uh-huh. um, we practiced and played in Connecticut. And okay. I had just come back. So I had had cancer and I was like, I need something to do. Like I need something competitive. I need something to get me back in shape. And I ended up joining a gym. And when I got to the gym, they were having these football tryouts. And so I walked over and I was like talking to, you know, the coaches and everything. And I was like, okay, well, let me do this. Let me try out. And so when I tried out, I thought I was going to be like a wide receiver or running back, you know, just with my size. Like quarterback was never. Yeah, you're a point guard. So you're quick yeah. and fast. I think, yeah, running back would fit you as a right. point guard. So then when I started throwing the ball, like I can throw. <laughs> and they were like, well, point guard, you know, quarterback, it's it's the same thing. And it is because when you're you're looking at the field and you're trying to adjust the situ- or you know, assess the situations and call plays, there is a lot of transferable, you know, yeah. attributes between the two. So um, I ended up playing quarterback. And it was it was really fun. I was not that good. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we can find your stats out there, we'll, we'll, we'll there's see a highlight back. video on YouTube. There oh, is. Yes, I think there we'll is. Have, if we take a little commercial break or a little break, we'll have to research <laughs> that and find your quarterback highlight. So, so yeah, you, you some did throw some moves. touchdowns. Yeah, I had okay. some spin move. Like I was fast because our line was very very new. Okay. I didn't have a lot of time. I remember the first play, first game. So you get that ball, you got to make a move. I literally got blindsided in the first play. I was laying on my back. The girl Welcome is... Welcome to tackle football. <laughs> that's exactly what she said. She grabbed my face mask, pushed my head into the ground, and said, Welcome to football. And I was like, um. my teammates come over there. It's like out of a movie. It seems like a it cheesy was. 80s movie. But like. I like got up, and I was like... Oh my God! What did I get myself into? Time out! Time out, coach. Because I'd never been tackled before. Because in practice they weren't allowed to tackle me. That's right. You're wearing the red jersey. Yeah. Practice. I literally felt like little giant. Did you lose the ball? I don't remember. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. No, actually, I think I maybe held it. That's a good thing. Yeah. That'd be the worst ever start. It was like awful. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was another good 
sports experience, I guess. Yeah, so pro basketball or pro football. I mean, not many people have that on their resume. And I then, know. And then guess, we're going to handball next, right? Yeah, might as well. I mean, that's that's not the trivecta that most people go through in their life. The, yeah, so like, well, when I, I worked on the Winter Olympics, it was so funny getting to know some of the athletes. Like, yeah. Like Alana Myers Taylor, who's a bobsledder, was a pro and college softball player. Yeah. You know, most of them were not the athletes that they ended up being. I think being the competitive Olympic juices sports. are there. I, 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 as, as much yeah. as how old I get, I'm into my 40s, like John, and had several surgeries. My body won't do it, but it's just one of those things where. Yeah. I've still had that competitive juices. Even it's so hard coaching college because right. I'm on one side of the line and it's so bad. When, if it's a game that's not going our way, I just want to step on the other <laughs> side. Even though I, you, you say as a coach, I want to show my players how to do it. You, you wouldn't. You'd fail at it. Because sure. yeah. in your mind, you're thinking, oh, I could have done that. And then you, you can't because of the game is. I know. Oh my, I'm 20 years removed from being a college kid. So it's. But it's, it's just. I the same thing. If I found some Olympic sport or, or something or, or found some little niche thing that I was good at, you're heck right. I would do it. Just a competitive. Right. I think maybe physically. I'm not near where I was like five, seven years ago, but mentally, I think when you when you start to get over, you see things differently. Like oh yeah, trust me. If I could, and how to train, how to I'm take sure care of yourself. If you took yourself. your brain, your mind, you put your your thoughts and understanding of the game, put into the freshman college basketball player. Holy moly! Like, oh yeah. Especially the point guard. Those are such hard positions. I coach a lot of goalkeepers, and very similar that you need experience to get better. But the problem is, right. while you're getting experience, you're also aging. Well, and you're yeah. Going through injury and you know, so I mean, yeah. a forty-year-old point guard—that's not going to work. Or a late thirties or mid-thirties <laughs> point guard. I'm talking about myself, but not, you're not forty. <laughs> Nobody out there listening, Kira's not forty. But it's the same thing. Is that such a hard position to stay healthy too? Because you're constantly, right. constantly like watching NBA Finals, seeing like you know people go down. But we're going to take a quick little break. We'll come back and talk more about your work with ESPN Winter Olympics and what you'll be doing with Capital Records. This is Charlie Flow World Sport for John DeCrisio, Kira Carlstrom. We'll be right back. heard through the power of media. Philicam will be hosting three Community Connections media-making meetups in the month of June in Northwest, Southwest, and Northeast Philly. Are you interested in making people-powered media? If so, Philicam's mobile media studio will be on site to teach you how to communicate your stories through media and to offer tips on how to make community-centric video and audio pieces for social media. You'll also receive technical advice from experienced media makers and Philicam producers. First meetup comes to Germantown on Saturday, June 2nd from 10 to 1 p.m. at Uncle Bobby's Coffee and Books. The second meetup will be held at Southwest CDC's office on Tuesday, June 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. The third meetup will be held in the Northeast at the Taconi Free Library on Wednesday, June 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. To register for one of these free community connection media making meetups, go to our Philicam Facebook page or visit our website at phillycam.org. Sports Show. Charlie Flo here on WPPN LP Philadelphia 1065 FM phillycam.org slash listen on your internet. Just breaking down all the action and professional sports that Kira Karlstrom has played throughout her career. Um, so talking about her comeback maybe playing pro handball. We've been at the break looking over some of the U.S. women's pro ball or handball and they've got like a trial I believe in Atlanta so we'll, we'll see what the fees are and see if we can get these in for a publicity stunt you know it would be pretty cool because I don't know any handball 
teams or clubs. Never heard of it. So, do you think you could follow my journey? <laughs> we can, but just let me say this again: it looks intense. Yeah, it does. We were watching some clips. It's not just not to discount any sport out there. And that's the thing. The last thing I want to do is say, "Oh, this sport's easy. I can show up and play it." No, if it's already organized as an Olympic sport, means that they've played Real it. Deal. They have coaches. They have you know, um, unless we can invent a sport. You know, that's the only way that any of us here can probably go pro. <laughs> yeah, John's like, I invent a sport. <laughs> My best friend said that in the car. She's like, I think it's time we invent a sport. Yeah. We actually, Tonight. we we, we tried that in, in um middle school, me and my friends, when we realized none of us were going pro. Because it was about maybe eighth or ninth grade, we started realizing we're not going pro. Because every kid in elementary, middle school, oh, I'm going to play in the NBA. I'm going to play in the NFL. I'm going to play running back. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, but you didn't make the JV football team. So I don't know how you're going to play in the NFL if you can't make the eighth grade team, you know, even as just a walk-on. So we, we invented a game. We called it buy ball. Uh, we, we took a soccer ball, and you had to put your hands together, and you had to carry the ball on your biceps, that's what we called a bye ball, because you had to bend your bi and, and then we had a goal, like a goalie, we played it on the soccer field, and you had to throw it in by either punching it, but you had to keep your hands together the whole game. <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> and if it fell on the ground, you could play it like a soccer ball, <laughs> but you can only score by throwing it in off your head. It was, it, it was pretty pathetic. It lasted about three games. <laughs> did you get a contract? No. And we also did try one. We decided to try to play soccer with American football. That was very painful, and a lot of people got hurt. <laughs> Toe ball? Yeah, no, it's just ball. trying to dribble an actual American yeah, football and kick it. So, yeah, it's yeah. bad. It's wear bad. Toes or yeah, exactly. Bad. So, but, um, so we want to break down what you did. You you did work on with ESPN and worked on some production with with the World Cups, right? Uh, yeah. So I worked on the Men's World Cup in 2010, and then in I worked South on, Africa. Yep. Did you get to go down there? No, I was all remote. You are in Bristol. <laughs> Bristol, Connecticut. Yep. Um, and then I did the Women's World Cup in 2011. Same thing from that was Germany, Bristol, I believe. Germany. And then I worked on the Euro Cup and the conflict. You're gonna. I'm gonna tell Conquer you. Conquer calf. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You said right. it. Yeah, okay. it's Conquer calf. John always. How do you That's pronounce it, John? You pronounce it different. I pronounce it a different time each time. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever I said would have Your been right. Your 2017 then. pronunciation, I believe, was Conquer calf. Yeah, that's Conquer calf. Conquer calf. Conquer calf. Conquer calf. Conquer calf. Conquer calf. Remember, I played basketball. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I worked on the animation side, so yeah. a lot of it was just. I mean, it was cool because I got to learn all the teams and the players. Yeah. Um, and I. Wasn't really a soccer fan before that. Okay. Um, and I really kind of fell in love in the game. But, you know, the last couple of years, even though I worked on the Olympics, um, so busy with just life and career that, yeah. you know, sports has been a little bit more secondary than it has um, been for me in the past, unfortunately. But Yeah, I mean, soccer's how I, I got to meet you um, right after the Super Storm of Standy. Um, yeah. Jill Lloyden did a really awesome fundraiser in Downingtown, a little day of soccer where they had – you know, national team players, and they had um, some Philadelphia Union players come out. And oh, yeah, we me, hosted me and, something yeah, together, me and you, right? me and you shared the MC duties, <laughs> and I do remember the very end, which is kind of funny because I coach on that same field almost twice a week now, but I'm, I'm coaching out there in downtown a lot. And just, yeah, I think it was like Lori Lindsay was there. I'm trying to think who else is there. I'm trying to remember all the uh, – Heather O'Reilly oh, so was there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a lot of the, the big names in, in, in U.S. soccer were there just doing clinics with the kids and there were some contests for them to meet some of the players and yeah. meet and greet contests. But yeah, that was definitely a lot of fun. And, and, and is that just kind of how you got to know some of the national team players, like doing pieces with them? And Yeah. Um, you know, and I know Jill prior to that. And so actually just working on it is when I really started to get to know some of them just because I was covering some of the stuff and, um, and I had been covering pieces on some of them throughout yeah. like title nine too. I worked on some title nine okay. pieces with the women's, um, national team and whatnot, but yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great group and a, and a great cause. And, you know, it's, 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 you know, a lot of fun just getting out and just, just getting to know athletes on the personal level. And I think I saw you do a piece with like, you were doing something with David Ortiz. Oh yeah. <laughs> My, uh, first year at Comcast best offer of the year. Um, big poppy. <laughs> Yeah, it, he was awesome. I mean, I didn't know much about him because I'm not a Sox fan, but he was incredible to work with. Such a nice guy. I believe I saw some pictures of you wearing your Detroit hat, you know. Oh, yeah, so actually I <laughs> we were doing a photo shoot with him, and he's like in outfitted in his whole uniform or whatever. And I come up, and we're all getting pictures with him before he leaves, and I like sneak on my Detroit <laughs> hat. And he was like, oh, come on. You see what I got to deal with? <laughs> um, but no, he, he was really great. He's actually a really funny actor. Oh no, he's he's been appearing in a lot of different things here and there. Yeah, he was commercials in a bunch and... of commercials. So I mean, he was a 
he was a good one to work with. It's funny because sometimes you, you wonder, like, how's an athlete going to perform? Are they going to be good on camera? Especially when you're doing commercial work and it's not like a piece or a documentary yeah. um, where they have to be a little bit more like they're like they're acting. So it was interesting to see him because he just was he felt so natural. Good. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you did after after doing some work with ESPN. You did do some. You, you've worn a lot of hats. I mean, I, I was thinking that the other night. Like you did, you did some work with Marvel too. Yeah. So uh, I I worked with Marvel Entertainment in New York, um, consumer products, and on some of the films, The Amazing Spider Man too. So which uh, I worked on that, and then Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and the first Guardians of the Galaxy. So it was i mean an amazing time because i wasn't really a super comic super fan and i think i fell in love with the characters and and the company and i still keep in touch with some of them just That's because awesome. and i'm like the first one at the movies to go see like black panther came out and you know the avengers infinity war like i'm such a nerd now like <laughs> no, i'm it, a real i know it, everything it is it is it is neat and, and and i think it's the timing is amazing because we're all grown ups and mm-hmm. i collected comic books as a kid but I haven't bought or looked at a comic in 15 years, but all the comics that I looked at and read now that are on the screen and that, that, that part stills, I think I get more out of these movies than the young generations kids going to them because they yeah. didn't, because the comic book industry, I don't know where it is, but I assume it's not like when we were kids, baseball card shops and comic book shops, they were every little main street had one yep. to find an actual card shop. I was just having beer with a friend a month ago. We were saying are there actually any card shops in our hometown anymore? We had like five card shops in our hometown and like four comic book stores and none of them exist anymore. Yeah, we when I danced growing up next yeah. to our dance studio, there was a card shop and they had comic books, magic cards. I used to collect those. Oh, yeah, Pogs, I remember yeah, those yeah, were there. Yeah. Um, and Pogs. Yeah, wow. Pogs. Were, yeah. The Slammers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I used to, and I used to collect comic books too. I mean, I, I wish I still had some of that stuff, yeah. but... I was kind of a little tomboy, so I was into all of that stuff. And, you know, in between dance classes, I would go over to the comic book store, and then I would go to the candy store. <laughs> that was like a thing. I want to <laughs> give an apology to my father out there. That This is a funny story. I was, I was recently home in Virginia and talking to my dad about my baseball card collection. He goes, yeah, I took all your baseball cards to a baseball card shop, and they said they were worth nothing. And I took them all, and I'm like, oh, I, I think I should tell you, I took all the valuable ones, and I have them in my basement in Philly. <laughs> So I feel bad for my dad. He went to the baseball card <laughs> shop and thought he could make a few bucks, you know, see if he sell my baseball cards. <laughs> I feel bad, Dad, going there with a bunch of comments. <laughs> the guy's like, Dude, what's wrong this with this guy? This, is the, this has got to be the world's worst baseball card collection. Not a Ever. single card is worth anything in his collection. <laughs> <laughs> Took all the good cards out. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's funny. That's too funny. Yeah, that's that's bad. <laughs> All your friends had cars at sixteen. They, where'd you get that money from? Yeah. <laughs> a couple Mark McGuire's. Uh, yeah. You know. yeah. Billy Ripken, Billy you know, Ripken. cursing Nolan cars. Ryan, <laughs> Mickey Ryan, Mantle. Yeah. yeah, those are those are some cards, man. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I remember that was a big deal. I remember when the '94 World Cup came out because they came out with soccer cards, and that was my dream as a you know, soccer player and kid. We yeah. never had soccer cards. Well, we had WNBA cards. Like I was, it was funny. I was home for a couple of weeks yeah. you know a month ago and i was like my dad was like can you go through the stuff in the basement i'm moving i'm cleaning out like <laughs> get your stuff out of the basement it's been here 12 years so i was like going through stuff and i had like 10 pages and a binder of and all it these get you caught up it's so it was crazy because i was such a WNBA fan for so many years like i like geeked out on that stuff because you know it was the first time that there were women professional athletes like you know in a in that's a, a big deal sport. yeah yeah it's something to look up to yeah i mean i mean we did have i remember I want to say in the 90s, before the 94 World Cup, we did have Pro Set, and I think Score made indoor. They yeah, made like Baltimore, but yeah, indoor yeah. soccer leagues. Wow. They've struggled throughout the years, especially now with the MLS. But that's all that we had is 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 kids. There was no professional top level league, and, and you know it's yeah. it's nothing compares women having no leagues. But if you're a soccer guy, you have no leagues that you can just cheer right. for. And I, I can't I can't imagine being a young girl growing up and you have. You know, oh, yeah. you have Olympics about every four years you can cheer for a female athlete, but four right. years in a kid's life is an eternity. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I mean, I think, what, the WNBA started in, like, 98? Yeah. Maybe 97, sounds, 98. Sounds right, yeah. Um, and so I was probably ninth, eighth grade. Oh, that's, that's like, a really peak age that you can really – Well, I didn't start basketball until I was, like, 11 or 12. It's not a, I started late, yeah. really late, because I danced and – it was funny. I was I went over to play at a friend's house, and her dad was coaching her Gus Macker team, and the four of them were running plays on a half court in their driveway. And I was like, "This is cool. I could do this." <laughs> and then he was like, "You could play." 
Like, and then he put me on a, a CYO or like a rec team yeah. when I was in like sixth or seventh grade. And that's how it began. That's awesome. It was like a short turnaround from that because then my first year I was like, I'm going to make varsity as a freshman. I'm going to start. And everybody's like, whoa, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. Slowly. You're 5'3 and you just started a month ago. <laughs> Sit down. Pump the brakes. <laughs> hey, well, it all worked out, you know. And, and, and I'm sure the, the recruiting process, you know, is – it's an interesting thing. Me and John both coach college, so it's 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 um, it's a, it's a whole it's a process, you know. It's yeah. can't imagine. It's very different too nowadays with all the exposure and you know the rules and social media. I don't even understand the rules. Digital, they, yeah. The, the as a coach, I have to pass with an eighty-five on an NCAA test every year, and wow. Let, let's see, this year, uh, no, it's a ninety. I'm sorry, a ninety. Uh, the first year I passed with a 95. This year I passed with a 90. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> when it's, the thing is you don't know. You do the test and you submit it and your AD's right there. and said, oh, you passed with a 90. I'm like, so basically one more question wrong. <laughs> you know, you got to set a waiting period to take it again. And it's just like. That's crazy. I, it, it's to the point where social media technology have made it so hard. Originally, recruiting was just a telephone. It's like, oh, you can't call them past blah 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 nine o'clock at night. You, you know, can't you must, send letters. you can't use a payphone. Like, what a payphone. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. like it was funny. My friend and I in high school. Yeah. It recruiting was so new. Well, it wasn't new, but like it's things that you could do. Involved. We the started, ways that you get a hold of players. Yes, and we started writing a recruiting for dummies book, <laughs> and it was oh. going to be my senior project <laughs> in, in high school. Oh, Wouldn't that have been good back in like two thousand and two? Yeah, it's recruiting for dummies. Yeah. But do you still have it? Well, you right. know, I was going through the basement a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Did you find it? Oh, that would have. <laughs> no. Oh, if you would have found oh, it, that would have been, been gold. Because John and I have joked about we want to write a book about winning at youth sports. Yeah, you know? that would be a cool. Yeah. Just we're kind of poking at the fun of youth sports is meant to develop. But are you here to develop a team? Or are you here to win? Because it's right. two different things. Because we run into that conflict as youth coaches all the time. Parents want to see wins. You tell a parent, I'm developing a team, but we lost five zip, but we're developing. We're learning to play a system. They don't. But I think you have to lose to develop at some point because there's well, so much absolutely. you learn Yeah, that, from that's the, the whole joke about the book's going to be called winning. Yeah. Like winning at all costs. You know? Winning. Yeah. yeah, winning at all costs. Dominating all right, well, if you sports. want someone to read it. <laughs> yeah, but it's going to be like a you know, a joking, like like a book, like more of a funny fictional type thing. Yeah. Same thing with like recruiting for dummies. <laughs> like, you know. That and, was genius. Yeah, Let me tell great. you. Yeah, that's. Like, I could have had my first book deal at, like, 15. <laughs> <laughs> I recruited myself. <laughs> well, yeah. we had gotten so many college coaching letters and how we were making tapes and putting things together. Yeah. And we were like, we know everything. We're 15. No, it's, 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 um, <laughs> it's, it's also, like, goes to not even the recruiting process, but as a player, how to get into a school yeah. of so many of these emails where – you know, my name's listed on the college website. They'll misspell my name, like butcher my name. I'm like, did you? and it's just a cut and paste email. And you right. want to write back. I'm like, did you even know that's not even my name? Right. Like you misspelled my name or. Like know, I or, wrote <laughs> every college coach in the country. <laughs> when I was a sophomore. So they're all listening now and they're regretting their decisions. <laughs> no, they're not. They're nah. not. Actually, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to go to Stanford. I bet you Tara Vanderveer is not <laughs> regretting that decision. <laughs> Guaranteed. I did interview Muffet McGraw for my book, though, from Notre Dame. Okay. She took a meeting with me for recruiting for dummies because it was my senior project. So it did actually become your senior project? Yeah, but I don't think a finished it. did. <laughs> Well, you graduated high school. I was an assume. athlete. I got out of a lot of things. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I really don't go, remember that, what That's happened. called going to college. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I didn't see that, you know, being we had several of our football players go full D1 scholarships. It's funny how, I'm just going to say it how it is, is the soccer and baseball team were the only teams that got drug tested. That's all I'm going to say. It's like, let's, 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 let's drug test the teams that don't matter to get our quota in. <laughs> See, I never got drug tested in college, not once. In the first month in Romania, I got drug tested when I'd never been more dehydrated. And I got in so much trouble because it took me an hour to go to the bathroom and we we're on a road trip. They brought me like a gallon and a half of water and I Keep still drinking. couldn't go. Keep <laughs> drinking. Good, good drink, good pee. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can't be under pressure. Stop, man. I know. I got nervous, especially with people in the bathroom with me. They had to watch. Oh, my God. It's a drug about... test. That's right. They're making sure you're not bringing your own with you. That's what I mean. You know how nervous I was? I've never been drug tested. I was like, I don't do anything. That's like a super European sports thing. They, you yeah. Know, they have the, the pennies on. The, the American is the drug committee. addict. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Crazy. I was like, oh. So let's, let's talk about 
the Capitol Records thing. What will you be doing with Capitol Records? So it's a new creative and innovation team. I'm actually really excited. Um, as I was telling you earlier, you know, I have wanted to be really creative um, in whatever my next step was. And I read this job description and I was like, there couldn't be something like written more perfectly. So um, it's the group I'm going to be in is called 10 Cubed. It's a brand new renovated floor that will be finished in August on the 10th floor of the Capitol Records building in Hollywood. And basically, we're like an innovation think tank. So basically, we're supposed to come up with ideas for it could be a long form series, short content, snackable content. Um, it could be a podcast. It could be something so it for seems social like good media. Good things from Capital, then, you know, not yeah. just music, you know. For all of their artists across all their labels, so that's Virgin, it's Capital, it's Blue Note, Astro Works, um, Motown is part of that. And I think it's really cool because they're saying that, you know, artists have a different journey. It's this like up and down when they're they're in their writing phases or they're on tour or they're launching an album or they're non-existent. They're taking time off, but they still need to keep relevant and in the audience of their fans and so they want to make sure that they're doing the right thing strategically to grow them as an artist and so I'm really really excited to get in there um, because they will get to come up with ideas for soundtracks for film um, which I'm finding out I'm I'm already talking to my new boss he's amazing he's actually from Michigan Um, we got together last week and I'm so pumped to start like I wish I could skip the whole moving part which was like my whole day today yeah exactly (laughs) just get my stuff out there so I can go start so it, it'll be sad to leave Philly, but this is, I think, an amazing opportunity for me, just you know, career-wise. You might actually be able to avoid the paparazzi now, because in Philly, you're like A-list celebrity. You know, maybe in LA, you're maybe like B-list. Yeah, C-list, I know. You, you know, know? <laughs> compared to Kim Kardashian. No, it was funny. I was out there last week, and I was telling my friends, I was like, I've never, my entire two and a half years living here, a while ago, I never really saw celebrities. Yeah. Four days. <laughs> Said hi to Floyd Mayweather, Lance Bass. T.O. was walking into my old apartment building. And How many said hi back? Uh, Floyd, I, Floyd, I was like, I'm from Detroit. He was like, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm from Detroit. I did. That was the first thing I could think of. I was like, you're such an idiot. I'm from Detroit. I know you. <laughs> but, he, but he like went like this, like giving me the pound. Lance was, was like, like, bye, 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 bye. No, he was standing next to me in the restaurant. I, and that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be like. <laughs> um, yeah, so T.O. And then I was sitting next to Adam Levine. Or like he was at a table, a couple of tables down from me at the Soho Trying house. Trying to geek out, you know? <laughs> well, I was like geeking out because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm listening to his new song that's on the radio right now. So I don't know, music's going to be a really cool thing for me to get into a, a different transition from sports. So thank everybody listening to World Sports Show, Charlie Flo and John DiCrescio and Kira Crossham. Big but, thanks for coming Yeah, in. Thank you guys for As having always. me. This was so oh, much well, fun. Thank I'm going to so miss much. you guys. Well, you can always Philly. call in. You can always call in. All right. Big announcement. We it. are moving the show to Sunday nights at 9 o'clock. Big announcement, World Sports Show, Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Next show, tune in. We're out. Thank you for watching a World Sports Show production. For more info go to worldsportsshow.com.